seven, six, five, four, command engine start, two, one, zero. Ignition. altimeter on the left, excuse me, altimeter on the right, and the speedometer on the left. All right, as we go through this flight, there are a couple of milestones here. The first one will be uh, max Q. That's when the dynamic pressures uh, are the highest on the vehicle. We go from 100% power, pull it back a little bit as we go through max Q, and then ramp her back up to 100%. Max G should be in about 10 seconds. Max Q has been confirmed. Again, thank you everybody for joining us for New Shepard's 25th mission to space. So far, a nominal flight. We have gone through Max Q. 100,000 feet. And the vehicle will continue to climb under full power of the BE-3 engine. The next milestone will be main engine cutoff. You will know when that happens when you see the glow of the engine at the base of the rocket go dim. Miko. There we go, main engine cutoff confirmed. Passing 200,000 feet. Now with the main engine cutoff, with the BE-3 U, excuse me, the BE-3 engine turned off, the vehicle continues to climb up towards its apogee, but as you will see on the left side, the speedometer will come down, and once that speedometer hits zero, that's when you know exactly that the vehicle has hit uh, apogee, its highest altitude in, uh, in the flight of the vehicle. Now I understand that separation of the capsule from the booster has been confirmed. And zero G has started for our astronauts. Shortly here, we're gonna let them unbuckle and enjoy the beauty of floating around in zero G, but of course, the spectacular views out of those windows. And I'll say that having passed over 330,000 feet, they are over the Kármán line, so welcome to space, astronauts. There we go. Apogee at just about 347,000 feet or so. Of course, we'll confirm our official figure at the end or after the webcast. At this point, our astronauts are still enjoying that beautiful zero G up in their capsule. All six crew just officially became astronauts. So exciting. 
Now, thank you again for joining us for the 25th mission of New Shepard, our seventh human <laughs> flight. And I'll just acknowledge that the, uh, the milestone uh, figure on the left is a little bit out of sync, but that's okay. Follow along with me through this flight. I got you covered. At this point into flight, you see the two craft, the rocket on the left, the crew capsule on the right, and you're going to see the speedometer on the bottom left of the screen increase as the vehicles uh, speed up back towards Earth. The rocket is going to beat the capsule back down to the ground. It is more aerodynamically shaped. And once it hits atmosphere, we've got a, a multitude of aerodynamic surfaces that are going to guide it back to its landing pad, just two miles north of the launch pad. And then just a little bit afterwards, we have the crew capsule, which will also come back down into that West Texas Valley for a nice soft landing. Pad is safe to pass, but not for approach. All right, you see the, the, excuse me, the booster that is headed down. You see the drag fins, the drag brakes that have just deployed. Those cut the speed of the booster in half. Also at the top of the rocket there, you see uh, the forward fins. They kind of look like pie slices, one on each quadrant. That helps keep the vehicle stable. And there we go, BE-3 engine relight. Landing gear deployed. 50 feet, 8 feet per second. Touch up. Auto sound started. And touchdown. Welcome home, New Shepard. What a beautiful flight to space and back for that booster. Man, it feels good to be flying again, Jackie. Taking our astronauts to space and back. It is, I mean, every day is a good day at the rocket factory, but flying people never gets old. And I love that West Texas desert dust that gets kicked up, and it's once it clears, a landed booster. It's yeah, like a magic trick. It, it, it's actually, ooh, poof, booster just arrived. Yeah, it definitely adds to the, to the drama of a landing a rocket from space. And, you know, as we say, landing the, the rocket is just really one of the proudest moments because it, it shows the incredible <laughs> engineering. It isn't magic. It is not magic, Jackie. The engineering that has gone into bringing, building, designing, testing, flying, but bringing this rocket home from space, ready to be reused. You see, very quickly thereafter, the... Uh, the, the forward fins come back in, the drag brakes come back in. You look like you just fuel her up and launch her from there and get ready to go again. But the show is not over. The crew capsule has deployed its, uh, its guide parachutes and its mains. Everything looking nominal on today's flight. Uh, looks like we do have two parachutes that have full inflation. The third is not quite fully in, uh, inflated. But actually, Jackie, this is, um, this is part of the design. We, one of the, in fact, the we were talking about my webcast. The first webcast that we did, we actually, we tested a shoot out. There are multiple redundant uh, factors in this, uh, in this system. And so landing with two parachutes is perfectly okay for this system. You'll also see the dust take out of the base of the, uh, of the capsule as she comes in to land. 
that is the air cushioning system is going to kick up a lot of that West Texas dust you just talked about. But it also, there it is, touchdown of the crew capsule. A beautiful flight for our rocket, for our crew capsule, for our six new astronauts, Mason, Sylvain, Ken, Carol, Gopi, and Ed. You are officially astronauts. Welcome home, everybody. Now, our team has started operations to safely recover our astronauts from the crew capsule. We send out our uh, safety crew as soon as we have visual connection with the crew capsule.